So now we've collected, authenticated, cleaned up the data, and we've got it into Excel. And now we're going to look at analysing those data and visualising our findings. If you'll recall, we had a list of countries in one sheet, and that contained how much a Big Mac was going to cost. And then in the other sheet, we had all the countries with their minimum wage. How do we get them to relate to one another? Let's look at the algorithm that we might use or the process that we might use to do that. What I want to do is to look up Argentina in this table and find Argentina and return this number, $2.33. If I do that, then Argentina here will show $2.33 uh, US per hour. And Excel has a very special thing to do that. It's called a vertical lookup. Uh, the lookup looks on columns, so it's vertical. V lookup is what we're going to use. But it depends, or it, it is dependent on these data here being in alphabetical order. Now, I'm pretty sure they are, but let's just make sure that they are by selecting all the text. I've selected all those things there. I'm going to go into data and I'm going to sort. And the one that I want to sort it on is Afghanistan. I want to sort it on that column down there. Okay, so there we go. And now we know that they're all sorted correctly. And back here, I'm going to say, right, what I want you to do, I want you to make this cell equal to the result from a lookup. It's a vertical lookup that I'm going to do open brackets because down here it's telling me what I want what it needs to complete its its data and I want you to look up whatever's in there and where I want you to look it up is over here I want you to look it up in this table I want you to look up everything between there and there okay now, what else do I need? The column index. Okay, so when you look it up, I want you to take the second column. So I'll say comma two. And then I'm going to put in something that says false. And that, if it can't find the country, will come up with NA. Otherwise, it'll come up with what it thinks is the best, which is usually the last one, Zimbabwe. And we don't want it to give us false results, so we're going to put in that false, which gives us NA. Now, I wonder if you can see a problem with that. I'm going to press return and go back and have a look at it. What will happen if I copy that down to the next cell is that this one here is going to go A3 to C202 and this one was going A2 to C201. So Excel is trying to help me here and not doing a very good job. So I need to make sure that it always looks it up in exactly those coordinates so that I get exactly the table that I want and nothing else. So before I copy it down, I'm going to select that A2 through to C01. Is that what I've got? Yes. And I'm going to turn that into what's called an absolute reference. An absolute reference means as you move down, copy things down here, change this value, A2, that's a relative, so I pick up the individual country, but don't change that. Always look it up in exactly the same table. And the quickest way of doing that is either Control or Command T, depending upon what computer you're on. So if we do that, it's going to put the little dollar signs in which say, don't change the column, always make it A, and don't change the starting point, always make it 2. Right, done. Now let's copy it down and see what happens. So I'm just going to copy to here for the moment just to check how it is. And it can't find Britain, so therefore it's returned NA, and it can't find Euro area, so it's returned uh, NA as well. But all the others seem to be okay. We could do a little check on this to see whether or not that's going to be okay. Can't find a reference there for Denmark and Egypt. It can find Denmark, but there's no pricing structure given to it. Okay, so let's drag down now to uh, here. And here we go. All of our countries have got all the information in them. Okay. So this here is USD per hour. 
And what we'd like is, just make that a little bit bigger. What we'd like is to be able to say, well, how many hours do I need to work for the cost of a Big Mac? And let's just try that out. I want to make this one equal to that number divided by that number. Done. So that would mean I'd need to work in Argentina about one and a quarter hours to earn a Big Mac. Let's just check what it is in Australia. I need to work about a third of an hour, about 20 minutes uh, to get that. So let's see what happens when we copy this down a bit further. Whoops, we're going to get a division by zero here, which says that I can't compute this because you can't divide things by zero. You can't divide $3.71 by zero. That's not going to work. So maybe we need to change this. I don't know. Let's just see how we go. So let's run right the way down. And let's make this a little bit less confusing by changing it down to how many hours we need. We'll just go to one decimal place. That's fine. So this is hours per Big Mac. Make that a bit bigger. So let's deal with these countries where we don't have the right sort of data. And you'll see these divisions by zero and all the rest of the stuff, ANAs. What I'd like to be able to do is to rank the countries that I've got data from so that I can see which is the country that I need to work least to get a Big Mac. So I think what I'll do is I will select all these data and I'm going to sort them on this column, on column D. So I'll get all the ones which have got NAs and division by zeros all down the bottom with a bit of luck. So I'll go to sort. I'll sort them by uh, that hours per Big Mac thing. And now we've got all of them. Ah, look at that. And I can take away now all of the ones from Bahrain down to United Arab Emirates because I don't contain information for them. I don't have information for them. Great. Now what I can do is to say what I'd like you to put into this one is the rank. Which is the best? So I'm going to make this equal to the rank of that number, comma, between all of these. So what rank does that one have? in all of these entries. Here it is, that rank. And I'm going to say I want it to be ascending and close the bracket. And for the same reason as we did before, I'm going to turn that into an absolute reference. Beautiful. So now I'm going to double click this. Interestingly, Australia is number one. I'm going to double click this, which will automatically fill down to the rest. And look at that. Australia is the best. New Zealand is the second best. South Korea is the third best. So now when we go back to our, our map, we can interpret this a little bit better. Isn't that wonderful? So I've started a new map now, and I'll import that new data. So this will give me the option to go and find it. I'm going to select it from my device. If you'll recall, we did this with the Big Mac template. And interestingly, it will only take the information from the first worksheet, but that's okay. In other words, it's not going to get the lookup table. So we've got that. We're going to title the markers with rank. And let's go and see what happens. It's now going to feed all of that information into the map. I suspect that this problem here is going to be the same. We'll open the data table. Yeah, and there we are. Jordan, we had issues with that before because it should be called the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. That fixes that up. And now we will take it from a uniform style and we'll label it with a rank. 
So there we go. We don't want to buy anything from South Africa because they're 20th. They're ranked 20th. We want to buy from Australia because we're ranked once. So let's go and buy ourselves a Big Mac.